Would you join me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock, our strength, our redeemer. Amen. When I drove over to Wilton last week for our Christmas event, there were some really nice Christmas decorations to see along the way. The garlands with the red ribbons and bows, the wreaths on the doors, trees covered with lights and ornaments, snowmen, reindeer, you name it. But there were two that were different from everything else that I saw. These two were the major scenes. After last week's pageant, the children all know that they're called creche. It's appropriate that the first creche I saw as I drove down Northfield Road was at our neighboring church of St. Francis of Assisi. And this is because St. Francis was the originator of these special scenes showing the birth of Jesus. Almost 800 years ago, in fact in 10 years it will be the 800th anniversary of the crush. Francis made the first manger scene for Christmas in a little mountain town in Italy called Greccio, and that gives us the word crush. Now this crush at St. Francis Church, you've seen it, has really big statues. <laughs> Let's see. There's Joseph and Mary. There's a beautiful angel and a group of shepherds. There are some animals of different kinds and sizes. And there are three wise men coming from the north, as it happens. <laughs> but let's call them coming from the east on their camps. But there's one statue you won't see there that you might be looking for. There's no little baby Jesus. That's because at St. Francis, this is Advent season, and it isn't time yet for the baby Jesus to be placed in the manger, not until Christmas Eve, when they will honor his birth by adding that little statue to the scene. And this is how it was in my house growing up too. We had a little Italian crash on the side table, and we added statues each week through the Advent season, waiting and waiting and waiting to unwrap that smallest statue and place the baby Jesus into the manger scene. Now part of the message of the crash at St. Francis is the message of lighting four candles and not yet the fifth. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming to be among us. Jesus is coming to us. Rich as kings or poor as shepherds, to mother and to father, to men, to angels, and to animals, all wait for Jesus to come and be among us, God with us, Emmanuel. Not too far up the road is that second crash, and it is certainly a different scene. In fact, it looks like just the opposite of St. Francis. At Hope Church, there's a little stable out front, all brightly lighted with a spotlight. And in it is a little manger filled with hay. And resting in the hay, with arms outstretched to bless, is the little baby Jesus. And there isn't anybody else there with him. No Mary, no Joseph, no angel, no shepherds, no animals, no wise men and certainly no camels. Now, Hope Church is also making a statement, a fair statement of their understanding of Jesus the Lord. Their message is, Jesus is a new, <coughs> Jesus is all. Jesus is the reason for the season. And more than that, I think their message is, Jesus is now. We don't have to wait until the 25th of December because Jesus is with us here now. We don't have to give, get, or open presents before Jesus is here. 
We don't need to sing any carols before Jesus is here. God with us. Amen. To look at them, these two manger scenes are as different as night and day. A manger with everybody except Jesus. A manger with nobody except Jesus. But they are both saying something about the birth of Jesus. They are both saying that God with us is what is, is what was, is what will be. In today's reading, we heard a song sung by the Blessed Mary, the mother of Jesus. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. When she opens her heart and lets her voice out, Mary celebrates the action of God in the past perfect tense. It has been done. God has done all these things. He has lifted us up. He has set us free. He has fed the hungry. These things are done already. Mary, who is still waiting for her little boy to come into the world, sings, it is finished. God has accomplished it. These things are completed and we are made whole, made glad made to be at peace. Before the first Christmas, Mary sang, Now, in the present tense, Now my soul magnifies the Lord. Now my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Now the world is not what it was. Now the world knows a Savior. Before the first Christmas, Mary sang, Welcome, welcome, dear Redeemer, Welcome to this heart of mine. And here we are, living in this world, the only world we know. On the one end of the street is an image of the world in need, waiting for a Savior. On the other end of the street is an image of the Savior without the world in need. And around us, between those two scenes, Carols are ringing. Oh. Savior God with us now. I'm reminded of that key moment in the story of how the Grinch stole Christmas. There was the Grinch high up on the mountain with the sleigh full of all the Christmas treasures of Whoville when he heard far below the voices of all the Who's in Whoville singing, Welcome, Welcome, Christmas Day. He heard a song of joy. Why should they sing when everything was gone, <clears throat> stolen away, when all their cheer had disappeared? Why should Mary sing when her child is not yet even born? Why should we sing when the world sits broken, still in need of saving? Here's what St. Augustine wrote many hundreds of years ago. When the Christian church raised these same questions. Let us sing Alleluia here on earth while we still live in anxiety, so that we may sing it one day in heaven in full security. Even here amidst trials and temptations, let us, let everyone sing Alleluia. God is faithful, says Holy Scripture, and he will not allow you to be tried beyond your strength. So let us sing Alleluia, even here on earth. And St. Augustine, preaching to his brothers, said then, Let us sing now, not in order to enjoy a life of leisure, 
but in order to lighten our labors. You should sing, he said, as wayfarers do. Sing, but continue your journey. Sing, but keep going. Are you one of the singing wayfarers? Does your spirit rejoice in God your Savior? And do you then magnify the Lord your God? Are you a who who sings da who dore? Da who dore and welcome, welcome Christmas Day. On TV, we watch singers get judged and sifted and sorted out, and we may come to believe there's only room for the best voices to be written. In church, we sing instead, let all rejoice, who have a voice to raise. I didn't have a voice for most of the last week. <laughs> last Sunday, when my little children had to sing for me, and they greeted me, Hello, Mr. David. And I went, back. <laughs> Some of them almost started to cry. They had no way of understanding me being voiceless, that my cold had taken away my voice. They couldn't understand that. It wasn't in their experience yet. Every adult, I just went like this, and they went, oh, you lost your voice. <laughs> <laughs> that afternoon, last Sunday afternoon, I went shopping. And Every store clerk who came up to me all happy and chatty saying, can I help you, when I would point at my voice and mouth the words I can't speak, got all flustered and embarrassed thinking they were talking to someone who can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned another way of understanding voicelessness. I have a voice to raise. Today it's froggy. Fred's here with a voice to raise. <coughs> He just had to stand for a minute just now because it's hard to keep sitting. Helen is here with the voice to raise. Nancy is here with the voice to raise. <coughs> At this Christmas time, when the insecurity of the world presses around us, its troubles, its conflicts, when the days seem somehow darker than before, at this Christmas time, let us join our hearts and hands and voices and throw into the darkness a song of present and joy. <clears throat> joy to the world, the Lord is come. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let us our songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains repeat the sound of joy. In our midst we have two families, that are uh, French speakers. Nous avons avec nous les deux familles francophones. And this song, ce chant, it says que nous chantons, that we sing, jusqu'au les collines, les pierres, up until the hills and the rocks. Répète. Repeat, répète encore, la joie éclatante de nous, the resounding joy. <coughs> repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat it.
joy until the rocks, the fields, the plains and hills resound with it. I don't believe you yet. We, the sun, we love.